Hey everyone, this is Climate 5. I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, a home theater PC I built. It's built inside this Apple G4 Cube case based off of the Atom 330. That's the uh, dual core Atom. And I think it's pretty neat. So here, check it out. So here you can see the uh, Cube. I've replaced the ports on the bottom from the original Apple Cube. Uh, I placed the uh, output from the motherboard here. I actually had to cut a hole in it so that it would fit. The motherboard is actually a very snug fit. I do have uh, power and reset buttons here, but I typically don't use them because I was able to get the touch capacitance to work. I'll show you that later. So one of the neatest features of this computer is that it has this slide out chassis. And uh, as you can see, the motherboard uh, fits just barely in there. I actually had to kind of gouge out some of the edges so that it would all fit. Um, let's see. Wi-Fi card fits in there. It's uh, attached with a flexible PCI extender. That's a ribbon cable. I swapped out the hard drive with a serial ATA, um, a terabyte sized drive. I replaced the slot loading drive with a Mac Mini slot loading drive. Uh, the original one had some issues, it wouldn't uh, actually pull in the disk. I remember I tried it and it didn't work, and so whatever. The slot loading drive uh, has very little clearance in there, and you can't quite see it from here, but I actually used the JAE50 cable uh, that is in one of my other videos to uh, end up connecting this to an appropriate uh, parallel cable, which wraps around the side of the cube here and then connects to the uh, parallel port on the uh, Atom motherboard. So it's a pretty compact fit in here, but uh, everything works. The Wi-Fi is amazing that it uh, actually fits in there and doesn't short anything out. So then the other part here is the touch capacitance switch. And you can't really see a whole lot here, but um, basically what I did is I replaced the original board uh, I didn't actually replace the original board, I moved the original board and extended the touch capacitance switch, I guess you could call it, uh, to where the hole was and I used a uh, US quarter. George Washington's hair was just textured enough so that I could um, solder a wire to the quarter, put it in here, and I wrapped it uh, basically in some electrical tape so that it wouldn't short out with the rest of the chassis of the cube. It is very, very touchy, so um, sometimes it does get shorted out and kind of stays activated, causing the computer to reset every four seconds. Uh, that's something I would like to fix if I can, but uh, it's pretty picky, so usually I can kind of just shake it and it'll stop uh, doing that. It's not the most ideal, but uh, the touch switch works, which is completely awesome, so I'm pretty proud of it. So now I'm going to show you how it works. So as you can see, the touch, to, uh, touch switch works. Got it all hooked back up. And uh, connected to my television, which is just an Olivia 37, not, yeah, 37 inch flat screen TV with a VGA port. Uh, it's probably the worst television ever. So I don't recommend buying it. Actually, you don't even have to worry about it because Olivia went out of business. So here you can see it's booting up OS X. Um, I used the... Uh, so-called ethical Hackintosh install, which is from a retail DVD. Uh, that way it also has uh, native system updates, which is really great. Now one of the big problems with home theater PCs is that you can't control it very well. You have to control it with a wireless Bluetooth keyboard or with a wireless mouse, but where are you going to put the keyboard and the mouse? It just doesn't work. So uh, I use Darwin Remote to uh, basically drive the computer from the couch. Uh, it works with point and click as long as you have your Wii sensor bar on, which now I do. I got a wireless Wii sensor bar for this. And as you notice, some stuff is going on in the background. I actually wrote a script to uh, open up system prefs and check to see if the Wii mode is connected. And if it is not connected, it opens up Darwin Remote, uh, which you guys can just download and um, it will activate the Wiimote Finder 
and it'll repeat this process until it detects that the, a Bluetooth device is connected, uh, in which case it closes these two windows, the uh, system preps and the uh, Wiimote activator. Uh, it also activates the infrared sensor, uh, which is an important part of the process because otherwise uh, the Wiimote basically just clicks. You want to be able to move it around. I don't know if you guys can see the mouse moving around on here, but pretty free and sweet. So now that I have this computer set up, uh, Home Theater PC works awesome with front row. I programmed the Wii remote to jump to front row when I press the home button. So I did that just now. And it takes a, little, a few seconds. The Atom isn't the most powerful processor, uh, but it still uh, works pretty well for video playback. So now I have the, all my front row media here, my movies, pop into the movies folder. And I'm a big James Bond fan, so let's go watch some Casino Royale. Takes a second to load. Again, not the most powerful computer, but it works out. So now we're watching James Bond. The controls to, uh, work pretty much exactly like the uh, Apple rem remote, except the only drawback is that when you hold down the right or left arrows on the Wiimote to fast forward or rewind, you can't hold and scroll like you can with the Apple remote. It just pops ahead a certain amount, which is unfortunate, but you can learn to live with it. I can trust you at all. And don't. I couldn't care less. So that's how it works with movies. Uh, of course, if you're familiar with Front Row, it also connects to other sources that you have in the house. So you can uh, play media from any computer that you have uh, hooked up with iTunes. I don't need to show you everything, but uh, you get the idea. Then, oops. Uh, you can also do things that you can with a normal computer, like surf the web. It's a little bit difficult to point and click with the Wiimote just because it is such a small target and the Wiimote's pretty sensitive. So I like to use a right click and then open. You can browse OS X, of course, and if you like to be able to, or need to be able to type something, I uh, put the keyboard viewer in here and it works pretty much exactly like any Wiimote would. You just point and click. Oops. Of course, again, it's pretty sensitive like the Wiimote, so typing with the Wiimote, if you've ever done it before, is pretty much the worst thing ever. Another feature of this, uh, this setup is that um, the Wii Remote kind of has some troubles when the computer goes to sleep. Obviously you don't want this thing on all the time. So when it's off and then you turn it back on, there we go. Now you'll notice that the computer is back on but the Wiimote is no longer active. I installed a program called Sleep Watcher which will run a script uh, when the computer wakes up and of course I just had it rerun that same Wiimote activator. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you're interested in the Wiimote Activator script, um, let me know, and I'll post it somewhere so that it can be downloaded. So, please leave your, me your comments. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you have any questions about the mod, please uh, leave them in the comments section or whatever you want, and I'll get back to you guys.